If you're looking for the best graphic design laptop in 2021, then you're in the right place. This is my top 12 picks. I have hands-on experience with 80% of the laptops on this lineup. So I've reviewed them here in my studio, including laptops like the Acer Concept D3 Easel. That's one of the laptops on the lineup. Great laptop, we're gonna talk about it in just a minute, but let's get right into the video here, talk about what you can fully expect out of this video. So first and foremost, we're gonna see the laptops in ascending order from lowest price to most expensive. We're gonna see the best fit for uh, each app and capabilities. There are gonna be timestamps in the description below and keep an eye out, you're gonna see affiliate links in the description below as well. So if you do make a purchase of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. We're also gonna talk through the specs. So what does it take to purchase the right graphic design laptop? So I'm gonna take you through the RAM, the GPU, the CPU, and the storage, as well as the color gamut range. We're gonna explain some of that so you know how to pick the right graphic design laptop for your needs. So let's dive right right in. First and foremost, I'm trying a little bit different structure here to see if you guys like this. I'm going to show you guys all the laptops from this lineup right off the bat. Then we're going to talk through the specs. Then I'm going to go back through each laptop and explain why I picked them and what I liked about them. So right off the bat, we have the Lenovo IdeaPad 3, the Acer Swift 3, the MSI Modern 15, the Asus ZenBook Duo, and the Acer Spin 5. We also have the HP Omen, the MacBook Pro M1, the Acer Concept D3 Easel, the Gigabyte Aero 15, and the Razer Blade 15 OLED 4K. We also have the MSI Creator 15 and the MacBook Pro. Like I said, these are all in the description below if you want to check the exact price and availability of those laptops. All right. First and foremost, let's dive into the Photoshop laptop scores. As you can see, one of the highest rated laptops in Photoshop on my benchmark test is the MacBook Pro 16, followed up closely by the Gigabyte 17 HDR, the Razer Blade 15, the Dell XPS 15, Acer's Concept D series here. And then moving down the line, we have a few gaming laptops, but then we have the HP Spectre X360. This laptop did not make my lineup. I still think it's a great laptop. It performs very well. It just is not one of my personal um, favorites for graphic design. From there, moving down the list, we have the Asus Tough A15, the Acer Predator Helios 300, and then it kind of continues down from there. MSI Prestige 15, we have the Apple MacBook Pro M1. And so you can kind of just get a feel for where each of these laptops sits on the chart and where you will be making, if you make a purchase, what performance your laptop is compared to other ones on the market. Next up, let's talk about the specs. Specs. So we're going to jump into the CPU, then we'll get into the GPU. RAM and storage. Let's dive right in. First and foremost, the central processing unit. So budget laptops have more along the lines of like a mobile processor. But the cool thing is for graphic design, you don't need crazy high performance like you would need for 3D modeling or video editing or motion design. Now, the reason I I would encourage people to move towards um, what's considered an H series processor, so an H classification, is if you're going to be getting into motion design, if you're going to be getting into video editing, then that's something you want to kind of future-proof yourself against. But if you're not, then you'll be fine with a G series or U series processor. But then you'll also be fine and get even better performance out of an H series for graphic design. For instance, if you buy the MacBook Pro 16, that comes with an i7-9750H, and as you saw on the Photoshop benchmark charts, it performs almost as good as a big desktop workstation. So that's kind of some give and take that you can make a decision on your own. All right, moving forward, um, let's talk about how we kind of uh, unpack these. So let's say you have a Ryzen 7 5800H versus a Ryzen 7 5700U. Make sure you identify the H um, if you're going to be making a purchase and you want to kind of future-proof yourself for video editing or motion design. Um, if you think that your career is heading that way, then you want to future proof and grab that H. If not, you'll be totally fine with a U series processor, especially for graphic design. Now, I will say that a lot of the U series processors are going to be more on the budget side of uh, laptop cost. And the thing is, when you get down to the budget side of laptop cost, what happens is they also put a lower quality screen on that computer. And what happens sometimes is you'll have a lower color gamut range, which means you'll have less color accuracy. We'll get into color accuracy in just a few minutes here. Um, but do note that if you get a more expensive laptop, naturally it ends up coming with a more powerful processor. So just keep that in mind. 
All right, let's see, moving forward here. Next up for the processor, mobile processors are often seen in business laptops and the like, whereas H-series processors are often seen in gaming laptops and high-performing professional workstations. Mobile processors can often boost up to the same or similar speeds as their H-series counterparts, but they are unable to hold those speeds for as long as they will begin thermal throttling at some point, which is which will end up causing a loss in performance. If you're curious about like really, really in-depth walkthroughs on CPU and GPU and all the different tech terms, I film dedicated videos. I'm trying to give like a very high level overview so I don't bog you guys down too much. So I'll link up those in the, in the uh, YouTube cards above, or you can head on over to my channel. You can look on my channel homepage and you'll see a tech terms uh, like playlist category and you can check all those videos out there. But let's keep moving forward right now. Next up is random access memory or better known as RAM or memory. Don't use all those words together. You'll get in trouble by the super techie people. I've gotten in trouble a lot, just so you know. So you're okay if you do. Every time you open an application, it is going to pull away from your RAM memory. See, I just did it. I just did it right there. Don't do that. They'll get mad at you. Your RAM. Uh, for instance, with web browsing, two gigs to five gigs of RAM will be used. For Photoshop, three gigs to six gigs will be used, and maybe for InDesign, two to four gigs will be used, etc. So that's why if you're a graphic designer who does a lot of multitasking, let's say you use like Photoshop and InDesign at the same time while also doing some like Google inspirational research for your project, then you're going to be using eight to 10 gigs of RAM easily. And so that's why I recommend getting 16 because it'll really help improve your multitasking and create a smoother experience in your computer. You can totally get away with eight. You just may have to have less programs open to have, have your computer run faster. But if you get that 16, you can do run more programs at one time. This is something that if you guys, I want to tell you guys about, if you guys are looking to save money on a laptop and you've been getting some value out of my channel, text into my texting community, 850-306-4644. Text the word hashtag deals to get weekly tech deals. So I'm going to be scouring the internet on a weekly basis to send you guys the best deals I find on laptops, um, on PC parts and on accessories for your computer. So if you want to get in on that, text into that number, 850-306-4644. You can also text me your questions and engage with me over in that texting community. Stoked to see you guys over there. Hope you join up. All right, next up, we have the graphics processing unit. The biggest question I get is, do I need a GPU for graphic design? And the simple answer is no. GPU is for video editing, motion design, 3D modeling. It, it supports the CPU. So it also helps run, you know, a couple external monitors in, in a more smooth way, but I'm talking like three to four. Like if you have like three or four external monitors, it'll help that process. If you have like one or two, it, you know, it's not going to make that, that big of a difference. Okay. So it supports the CPU. So basically what happens is if you're doing some GPU heavy tasks like video editing, motion design, so you have like graphics in motion, um, so the video or motion graphics, um, you what, what will happen is the CPU will say, hey, I'm struggling with that. That's not really what I was built for. So it'll push off the graphical, you know, mathematical computations to the GPU and the GPU is built to handle those. So the GPU then take over and just do a very, very smooth job and an efficient job of processing the graphics. Okay. I really feel like these cards should be named like VPUs, like video processing units, because graphics is often confusing. You know, like when you think about it, I am a graphic designer. Should, don't I need a graphics processing unit? No, it's just, it's the name. It doesn't quite communicate exactly what it does. Um, like I said, if you want more in-depth videos, I know I'm kind of going really high level right now. You can watch those over on my channel, but for now, no, it's not important. Now it is important if you want to get into motion design or you want to get into video editing or 3D modeling. Yes, it then becomes important. So if you want to future proof yourself, then get a laptop with a good GPU. Next up, storage, SSD and HDD. Think of SSD like a big thumb drive. So there's no spinning disc or arm um, or I that's reading the information off of this disc. So with the HDD hard disk drive, it has a disk arm and I that spins, hence the different RPM rates. So that's why you'll see hard disk drives with like 5,400 RPM or 7,200 RPM. That means this disk is spinning faster, which makes the drive a faster read and write speed. Whereas with the SSD, there's, there's no spinning parts. So it's just as fast as the specific um, cell, so to speak, um, is reading and writing that information.
Okay, example of how they work. So I've always said, um, my example I like to use is, is like looking up a word in the thesaurus. So if I want to know what the word ambiguity means, I can go over to say my bookshelf over on the wall. I can pick up a thesaurus. I can find the word ambiguity and say, okay, there's an ambiguity means. All right, versus me going, hey, what's ambiguity mean? And I pick up my phone and I Google ambiguity definition or ambiguity thesaurus, whatever it might be. And then bam, right there, that's the answer. So it's like going and just picking the answer really quick versus physically walking over to my bookshelf, pulling my book off and searching for it. So hard disk drive versus SSD. I hope that helps uh, with understanding the difference there. Color accuracy. Okay. This is something that I'm really excited to talk about. I did not include this um, as in depth in last year's video. So let's dive right in. And also I'm creating a dedicated color accuracy color gamut range video if you wanna get even deeper. But first and foremost, and for an overview, color gamut is the amount of color your screen can produce. Delta E is a certification that clarifies the level of accuracy at which your screen produces that range. So a lot of times you'll see like Delta E less than two, for example. So the lower the number of the Delta E, the more color accurate your screen is going to be. Now, RGB versus CMYK, these are two different color spaces. So you cannot reproduce screen colors on a print device. Okay, so what I mean by that is the colors that you see on your screen. So the colors I'm looking at when I see my screen here, those cannot go to print. What I mean by that is that exact color that I'm seeing on my screen is a different profile. So red, green, blue versus cyan, magenta, and black. Those colors mix differently, which means when I send something that's visually green, the green on my screen, and then I send it to the printer, it's going to look different because there's different colors that are mixing to create those colors. So RGB is screen, uh, screen classification, and that's the way that screens produce color, and CMYK is the way that print a printer produces color. All right, next up, Adobe RGB versus sRGB versus DCI P3. sRGB covers the smallest spectrum, okay? So it's gonna be the smallest amount, the smallest size. As you can see here on the screen, this is sRGB. It's quite a small range. Versus the Adobe RGB, which covers the largest spectrum for this standard laptop screen, which is gonna be right around this range, okay? Okay, yeah, right here. That's it right there. It's kind of hidden behind the black one. And then we have DCI-P3, which is also popular, but covers a slightly smaller but slightly different range. So as you see, the Adobe RGB leans more towards the greens and the blues. Okay, here this like gray and purple line or black line. And then the DCI-P3 is this blue line and leans more towards the yellows and the reds. So those are kind of the differences there between the uh, color gamut ranges. Okay, so for me personally, Adobe RGB is my go-to when recommending laptops for creative professionals, it covers a larger range, and it's a more common certification and uh, benchmark that people uh, are using. A lot more people are using DCI-P3 now, but it's just not as popular as Adobe RGB has historically been. sRGB is good, but it definitely is a smaller range, and it will turn out to be less color accurate. You're going to have softer colors, you're going to have less vivid colors, um, so it's just it's less of a, a really great benchmark. All right, let's get into the dedicated laptop lineup. I appreciate you guys hanging on here and uh, let's dive right in. First up is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. I picked this laptop because it has the Ryzen 5 3500U, which is a great processor. If you're just getting into graphic design, if you need a budget-friendly laptop at under $500, this is my top pick. So it has eight gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD. The only issue is, like I mentioned earlier with those more affordable laptops, it has a, it has a low color gamut range. See here, it has a 56 sRGB and a 36 Adobe RGB. So what you could do is um, snag like a color accurate monitor to complement your graphic designing. Um, so I'll link one of those in the description below. Um, the monitor is what produces the color. So even if you have a, a, a non really strong color accurate screen, so like a low color accuracy color gamut range on your screen, and you push your designs to that other screen, you'll be able to see the color gamut that's reproduced on that screen. So it doesn't dictate the color that it can push out because it has a low color accurate screen. I hope that makes sense. Next up on the list is the Acer Swift 3. This is one of my favorite on the go laptops. It has an all aluminum chassis. It's thin, it's light. Um, I use this laptop as one of my as my daily driver whenever I'm you know out of the office, need to write scripts and work on things. It's fantastic. It comes with the Ryzen 7 4700U, great processor, around $650 laptop. Has the AMD 7 uh, graphics, eight cores, eight threads, eight gigs of RAM, 512 SSD. 
But again, it has lower color gamut range. So I don't do color grading. I don't do much designing on this laptop. Um, I'll maybe do some like initial concepting, but this is not like my finalization type of laptop. It could work well for 1080p video editing if you get into that sort of thing, but it is in no means a powerhouse of video editing capabilities, but great for graphic design. Next up is the MSI Modern 15. All right, so this is a laptop. We're starting to see some better color gamut range here. 99% sRGB, 60% Adobe RGB. Make sure if you want this color gamut range on this laptop, you get the i7 10510U. I was talking to MSI, trying to figure out um, the different color gamut ranges because I had an i5 version when I was reviewing it in my studio. And they said, yes, only the i7 has this color gamut range. So if you want that color gamut range, Make sure you get the i7 model. Comes with the MX330, eight gigs of RAM, 512 SSD. Great laptop, uh, really good on the go, good build quality. Really enjoy it. Next up is the Asus ZenBook Duo. This laptop is is so cool. I, I've reviewed it in my studio. I've taken a look at a few different models at CES in 2020. It's just, it's a great laptop. It takes a little bit of getting used to with the trackpad on the right side, but these dual screens are really, really fun. It helps with workflow a lot. Um, and it's a great on the go laptop because of that. It just helps so much with giving you more space to do your work. So this laptop comes with the i7 10510U. It's just under a thousand dollars, the MX 250 GPU has a pretty solid color accuracy at 99% sRGB and 63% Adobe RGB. Now there is a 4K version. If you want even more performance um, out of this laptop, you can get the, I think it's a, it's a little bit larger and it's got better color accuracy and more performance. So if you want to be like somebody who's getting into 4K video editing eventually, um, you could get that more expensive model. That's up to you, of course. Next up is the HP Omen Ryzen 7. This is a great laptop for somebody who loves to like game, but also wants a good laptop for graphic design because it's one of the only laptops that are, that's around this $1,200 budget range that has great performance and is great and has great color accuracy. So it's just, it's a real win. So you can do 4K video editing, you can do gaming. Um, it's just the best price to performance that you can get. It, I wouldn't pick it as like my number one straight graphic design laptop, but if you're somebody who wants a really good hybrid laptop, it looks great. It's not too flashy like most gaming laptops. It's just a really good pick. Next up, next up is the MacBook Pro 13 M1. This would probably be like my award for the best overall graphic design laptop. It's thin, it's light, it's well built. It's a decent price point. It's not an insane powerhouse. It's not blowing power out of the water, but it is still very, very good in performance. As you saw on my benchmark scores earlier for Photoshop, um, it uh, landed like mid to low end of the charts, which is still great. I mean, it beat out my 2015 MacBook Pro, which I still do design on, and it's it's a wonderful laptop. So this is a great laptop. It's color accurate, good for 1080p, and maybe some light 4K video editing if you're going to get into that. But if you're not, don't even worry about it. This has 100% sRGB and 81% DCI-P3. So I, I could say a lot, way more about this laptop, but you know Mac products are quality. Um, it's going to run well, so it's one of my top recommended. Next up is the Acer Concept D3 Easel. Now, this laptop along with, you know, I didn't include it in the list, but I'll mention it here and I'll even link it in the description below. So this laptop along with the Spectre X360 and the HP Envy X360 are great laptops. This one is just way more um, unique. I would say it's a really, really great use case. It's a really great offering and the price point isn't crazy. So this pen actually like fits into the uh, keyboard deck it's got good performance, great color accuracy, um, and it's just the functionality is very nice. What I'm not fond of a lot of times about um, two-in-one laptops is how like it turns over in a tablet and you just kind of like lay it on your desk. Um, but this can do that as well. This can lay flat. Here, let me show you. So like this can lay flat like that, um, but then it can also, let me pull it up real quick. It can also, you know, sit up like that. There we go, right there, yep. So this is a really, really great offering. And like I said, for the price point, it's not crazy. It's just about $1,300, which for most average two-in-one laptops with really good performance at or about this price point, okay? This comes with the i7-10750H, great processor. There's that H-series processor. GTX, 16, GTX 1650 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 99% sRGB, 79% Adobe RGB. So it's a, it's a really solid offering from Acer. Next up is the Gigabyte Aero 15. This is gonna be like the ultimate gaming, video editing meets graphic design laptop, and here's why, okay? The color gamut range is 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB. The GPU is the RTX 2070 Max-Q, beast for gaming and video editing. Got about 16 gigs of RAM, and it has the i7-10750H, which is a very, very 
like historically solid uh, CPU. So best bang for buck on the upper end of the price point. Next up is the MSI Creator 15. Now this laptop again is 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB, has even more power than the Gigabyte Aero 15, but it is also a little bit more expensive. But because of that being more expensive, it comes with a beast GPU and a beast CPU. So this i7-10875 is eight cores and 16 threads versus the Gigabyte Aero, which is six cores and 12 threads. So this is just a more uh, higher performing laptop for about an extra, what do we got here? about an extra hundred or so dollars. You know, obviously these are these are estimated prices. I don't know the live prices. If you want to know the live prices, you can head down in the description below and click those links. This is a 4K display versus the Gigabyte Aero's Full HD display. So that's how you're getting, you know, bang for buck here. A little bit more expensive, but gives you a bit more performance. And um, on to the Apple MacBook Pro 16. So what we have here, of course, is historically Apple's creator works, you know, on the go workstation. This is still a great laptop. I know everybody's raving about the new M1 chip. This laptop still kicks the pants off of the M1 inside of Photoshop. As you saw on my Photoshop benchmark test, this got like an 812 versus the new MacBook M1 with like a 565. So yeah, the new M1 chip is great, but when you combine all of these specs together, the AMD Radeon Pro 53M GPU, the Intel i7-9750H, um, and 100% srgb 100 adobe rgb this laptop still is awesome so great recommendation but like i said if you're going to be getting into 4k video editing motion design then you would want to go towards this and if you want a bigger screen you would go towards this model if you're just going to be sticking with graphic design or photo editing um, then stay with the m1 it's a great laptop if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of these laptops, head down in the description below, click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Until next time, if you want more videos about graphic design, laptops, or anything along those lines, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep creating, keep designing. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.